Crypto can be a gamble. We all know that. It can be a complete roller coaster at times. If you're up, why not throw some profits on mybookie.ag and use your extra cryptocurrency in their casino? With live dealers, it's exactly like being in Vegas, but without all the smoke and noise. From blackjack, roulette, baccarat, slots, sports betting, props on entertainment and politics, all the way to esports like League of Legends and Counter Strike. Not to mention, you can play all of their games on your cell phone, iPad, or tablet computer. It's entirely up to you. You can literally play from anywhere. It's like being in Las Vegas on your couch. MyBookie.ag also offers deposits on their website with Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. And payouts are incredibly fast and totally anonymous with cryptocurrencies. Check them out at MyBookie.ag and be sure to use the promo code CryptoStreet for a 50% bonus when you deposit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Let's go. Round one. Fight. Thank you for tuning in to the Crypto Street Podcast. Here are your hosts, Kim Whale, Prince, and Crypto Dale. And remember to tip your waitress. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? This is again Carlos Dale Matos. <laughs> Coming to you from snowy, balmy, cold ass, blizzardy Iowa. Killer. This, wait, 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 sorry. I got ahead of myself here. You are tuning in to the Crypto Street Podcast episode. I believe, guys, this is number 50. 51? Believe that shit? Jesus. Shit. 51, (laughs) is it? We forgot to mention it in our 50th episode, but yeah, 51. It's hard to believe. So that's right. So we're we're just going to mention it. It's all downhill from here, guys. What's good out there in Cali? Uh, it is a beautiful 77 degrees right now. Um, our weather's been amazing the past week or so. Been a little windy, but we can't complain. It uh, it's tripping me out hearing you guys say that you still have blizzards and snow going on <laughs> and everything. Um, so I feel for you. Yo, you want to hear how crazy this weather is here? Yesterday, okay, we had tornadoes touching ground about, t- about an hour and a half away from my town. And... Tear, like tearing ripping roofs off and so we're under severe thunderstorm watch a tornado watch and at the same time we're under a blizzard warning like what in the hell <laughs> blizzard what tornado. is that <laughs> who does that you know what it's kind of like dude is like new york it's supposed i think new york tomorrow it's going to be like 78 and then on monday it's going to be 45 uh, the weather's all yeah, over nuts. the place global warming something yeah france everyone is just sitting on the edge of their seats <laughs> waiting to hear but it's up. And let's go check in weather with Prince. <laughs> so we get we're getting a little <laughs> bit of snow, uh, but yet it's still sunny outside. So that snow is melting pretty quick. So we got a lot of water buildup. Uh, it's making things a bit of a mess in the neighborhood. Tons of water, <laughs> but overall, you know, it's pretty good. Mister, Mister Rogers, <laughs> in the neighborhood. So everyone is just dying to know: is it alt season? So we're gonna hash that. Hash us out later in the show. But for now, we have got a guest that uh, I'll be completely honest. When I first kind of joined here, I was like, oh, God, I do not want to piss this guy off. He's got this skeleton looking <laughs> mask on his <laughs> avi. You know, I do not want to cross paths with him. I think one time, so Cal, I think you replied to something I said when I was just a little old pleb. And I was like, you know, I got the notification. I'm like, oh, God, please tell me he's not just tearing me apart. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that you would do that. I uh, might. But. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, man, thanks uh, thanks for taking the time and joining with us. Um, yeah, thanks for really having me on. appreciate up. it. Yeah, no problem. So let's just kind of get started with uh, how'd you get into crypto? You know, what, uh, what was it that you saw that, you know, sparked some interest? Well, I uh, I found out about it pretty early on, uh, about uh, the end of 2009, beginning of 2010 is when I first heard about Bitcoin. However, because I was in the military and I was uh, deployed to Iraq at the time, so I thank was you actually for your service, by yeah. the way. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was actually home on my two week leave at the time when I found out about it. So I was just like, oh. the you know, my friend was telling me about this internet money that was used by people to buy drugs off the internet. <laughs> and I was like, man, I don't got time to be fucking with that. I, I got to go back to fucking war in like a week. So uh, I'm not worried about that, right? Fucking magic internet money right now. And I just kind of forgot about it for a few years. 
and uh, rediscovered it in like 2012, 2011. And uh, again, kind of same thing. I was I was sitting there on Mount Gox with my fucking info in my hand, about to buy some Bitcoin at eight dollars a piece. And my buddy hit me up. He's like, "Hey, we're all going to the strip club. Come on!" I was like, "Well, <laughs> I mean, I was like 20, so I was like, fuck yeah, let's do that instead.'" <laughs> and uh, yep. Went and spent that money out in town instead. So when I finally actually bought some fucking Bitcoin was December of 2013. That's when I finally actually got in. Wow. You do some mining too, don't you? Oh, yes. I'm very big on the mining. That was actually one of the big, uh, one of the big first draws to me was, you know, because uh, I've always been IT. I've always been, you know, in computers and stuff. And uh, I had all sorts of computer shipment lying around my house. And I was like, wait, you're telling me I can run a program on this shit and get paid? Fuck yeah, <laughs> let's do that. That's awesome. So another thing I think you're kind of well known for, at least in my eyes, is your um, bitmexing. So maybe <laughs> let's... Uh, Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, any styles that I know we get hit up a lot um, from people list, from our listeners and and say, when are you guys going to talk about margin trading and Bitmax and stuff like that? So if you could talk about your test nut account, that'd be <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, we all know that you know U.S. people can only do the test net account, so it's great for practicing. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I could go over some of the uh, basics and such. Uh, what I do, my system is clearly my system, so it's not going to work for everybody, and it's a chaotic, insane piece of shit, but somehow it works for me, so <laughs> hey. But uh, every everybody's going to have their own system when it comes to margin trading. Uh, okay, first off, uh, you know, we should hit the basics of what the hell is margin trading. Well... Uh, basically leverage trading or margin trading as it's also known because uh, you know how English people are you know we like to give multiple names the same shit <laughs> uh, <laughs> so margin trading and leverage trading are the same thing what that means is you are basically uh, borrowing money from whichever brokerage uh, you know uh, platform or, or firm you're using so in this uh, example it would be bitmex we are borrowing bitcoin from bitmex uh and depending on the leverage that you use or the the margin that also uh determines how much you're borrowing so say you bought um what's the current price about eight thousand dollars right yeah. now yeah just so say you bought okay so each contract on bitmex each contract is worth one dollar so let's say you bought 8,000 contracts, roughly one Bitcoin worth of uh, contracts right now, and you use 10 times leverage. Well, you're actually trading, instead of trading with just $8,000, you're actually trading with $80,000, only 8,000 of which is yours. Now, uh, how this works is uh, whether you're long or short, uh, you will get a liquidation price. What that means is, uh, say, for this example, let's say you're long. So you're betting that the Bitcoin price is going to go up. And you long 8,000 contracts uh, right now at $8,000. So, you know, one Bitcoin. And you use 10 times leverage. So you're trading with actually 10 Bitcoin, but you have one Bitcoin as collateral. If the price goes down then it starts eating into your collateral. Once all your collateral is used, that one Bitcoin, if it goes down enough, then you're, uh, you hit your liquidation price and your position gets closed. It gets liquidated. You get margin called. Again, a lot of different words that mean the exact same thing. Uh, but you get margin called. And the brokerage uh, platform will automatically close your position so they don't lose their money. So when you margin trade, at least in theory, you know, there is uh, every once in a while uh, uh, a trading engine jack up that might not liquidate you fast enough in times of high volatility or some shit. But 99% uh, of the time, uh, you do not lose any money other than your own. 
So you will not owe eighty thousand dollars if you if you get margin called on that trade. It's not like you're going to owe eight thousand. You're just going to uh, eighty thousand. You're just going to lose the eight thousand that you put up, and you won't lose any more. But there goes eight thousand uh, dollars. Now, however, uh, the the advantages to leverage trading are obviously it allows you to uh, make much larger profit gains. Uh, compared to the amount of collateral, collateral that you're trading with, uh, the flip side to that is the risk is much higher because now you have a liquidation price, a margin call price, where if the price of Bitcoin hits that liquidation price, you lose all the collateral that you put up and you get liquidated. So uh, it's, it's very, very, very high risk, but it's also very, very, very high reward. Uh, as you can see from uh, Angelo, oh, yeah. Angelo fucking dominating the leaderboards on there. So He's uh, killing it. Oh yeah, what, once you and Angelo, Angelo is actually one of the guys I learned to trade from uh, when I first started on Twitter. He was one of the first guys I I followed. Uh, him, Sicarius, Crypto Gambler, uh, you know all those guys. Emerald BTC. Sorry, I know I keep coming up with more. I could do this all day, but uh, <laughs> you know. All those guys were the big guys when I first started, and they were the successful traders. So I, I really followed them and everything, and, and tried to pick up what I could from them. On top of using, you know, other training materials with uh, Angelo, obviously he knows what he's doing, and he follows, you know, proper risk management. And so you guys could see he's making millions. Mm-hmm. Like that dude's fucking yeah. loaded. Love Angelo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, it's a, uh, you know, gold. Yeah, right he's there. like the whale of whales. You know, or the OG yeah. of OGs. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and very quiet too. Like he's not like like a lot of these guys who are constantly tweeting and you know trying to grow their follower counts. He's a guy who like he's basically gotten his following just by being really good at trading for the most part. You know, well, yep. he's not going around shit posting. Yeah, no, he well, he used to be a hell of a lot more active in the earlier days. Obviously, like 2014, uh, even 2015, uh, he posted a lot more than he did. He was never really big. For the you know like consistent shit posting, yeah, every once in a while you'll see Angelo throw out a a awesome shit post, but you know he's not constant on it all day like me. He's too rich to care about yeah. follower count now. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. I think that's exactly what yeah. happened. Is that he made his fucking nut and he was just like, <laughs> well, fuck it, I'm just gonna play just now. Screw everybody. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I might get on there and you know play around for a little bit, but for the most part, I'm just gonna chill on this beach in Tahiti or oh, whatever the fuck he's doing. Right, exactly. That's exactly right. So I think uh, I'm glad you touched on that, SoCal. I think one of the biggest misconceptions on on Bitmex is if you know people, and I, I'm just as guilty, so I'm I'm not faulting anyone for thinking of this is that I was all never wanted to try it because I always thought that I'm like, okay, so if I would, you know, buy 500 contracts, but I only have $200 on there, (laughs) how are they going to get the rest? And, you know, are they going to get into my bank account? (laughs) No, 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 no. Are send me a bill? No, no, uh, no. yeah. With, 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 uh, those leveraged accounts, at least in my experience, you don't ever have to link a bank account or anything like that. Right. So you're pretty safe. You know, if you get margin called, they're not going to reach in and take your savings. Be like, "Hey, we own your life now." Uh, that's not. I gonna think another misconception so, too is that you're not actually trading Bitcoin per se on Bitmex. You're trading contracts tied to Bitcoin, like you mentioned, SoCal. They're only worth exactly. a dollar each. Um, but it's really a, a genius setup by. Arthur Hayes and you know everyone else who set it up. Yeah, yeah, it's not actual Bitcoin. It's a Bitcoin derivative that you're trading, which mm-hmm. is the contracts that are worth a dollar. Everything is denominated in a dollar, though. I mean, sorry, shit, uh, Bitcoin. So uh, <laughs> therefore, you know, you buy the uh, uh, contracts, even though they're worth a dollar a piece. You got to pay a dollar worth of Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, that's if you're buying them flat out. You know, obviously, if you're using leverage, they cost less, depending on how much leverage you use. Uh, but you know, the more leverage you use, obviously, the uh, 
higher your liquidation price is going to be. Yeah. Uh, or, so the closer to your entry, in other words, means the more likely it is you are to get liquidated. And it takes a little bit of time to get used to the cross-leverage thing and being able to adjust your leverage on the fly. Um, the way I like to kind of compare it is that, you know, I, I think regular margin trading is sort of like driving a speedboat and trading on BitMEX is sort of like sailing, where there's a lot more stuff you have to worry about. You know, there's a lot more activity you have to do at times. Um, because you're constantly looking at this, making sure this is okay, making sure um, your liquidation price is a comfortable zone from where you are right now. Um, it's a way more active experience. I think. Yes, exactly. And uh, since we're going to touch on that, because there is two types of uh, margin on uh, BitMEX, is specifically there is the cross margin, like you stated. Then there is the static margin. Well, with the uh, static margin, say you just select, uh, you know, uh, five times leverage, and you know you you open your position, and uh, it starts getting close to your liquidation price. Well, you have options available. You can either add, uh, if you have extra equity on hand on on you know Bitmax, which I would always uh, suggest you have extra equity on hand. But uh, say you have some extra Bitcoin on hand, it's not tied up in a trade. You can either add that on margin to reduce your liquidation price, or you can switch your margin if you have enough, which normally you do because uh, for how cross margin works is it uh, to instead of uh, setting aside a set amount of Bitcoin uh, as your collateral, it uses all of your collateral on uh, BitMEX. It's riskier in the fact that if you do get liquidated, you're going to lose everything you have on BitMEX. However, it lowers your liquidation price so far that if you do it right, you'll never have to worry about that. When I was sitting long uh, from 6000 I was using cross margin. My liquidation price was under 2000 mm -hmm. So I knew that there was basically no fucking way I was going to get liquidated. You can sleep. Yeah, there was no way. So that everybody's asking, man, how are you sleeping in a leverage in an open leverage long? And blah, we're in a bear trap. Blah, blah blah. Well, motherfucker, because I know what I'm doing, <laughs> and yeah. I use cross margin and had you know a shitload of extra <laughs> equity. So if this shit tanks, we got to go under two thousand for me to get liquidated. I know if I get liquidated, all you other bastards are getting liquidated before Everybody I am. Is. Yeah, exactly. So bring it. I can go to sleep. <laughs> it's hilarious for me to like think back of when I first got into my max trading days. And I think Bitcoin was only around like $600 at the time. And so I would continuously just play with 0.1 BTC. And then, you know, you it's know, like serious money. <laughs> yeah. And like, and back then, you know, it was nothing really. Right. So it's like, I would just go full D gen. It was like, you know, okay, let's get that 50 X up in here, lose it all. Okay. Let's do it again. Let's, you know, get the credit card out and go to Coinbase. Um, okay. Um, coin casino. Yeah. Uh, in okay, 2015 two. at 200 times leverage with $200 Bitcoin. Dude, Woo. I've lost so much fucking Bitcoin on okay. Uh, <laughs> coin it's ridiculous like that's what traumatized me yeah. and also you know baptism by fire but that's that's what really hurt me with leverage uh because i actually did not start margin trading again until uh like december of last year because like i i just got so fucking wrecked the first time i margin yeah. traded which like i said it was like 2014 2015 on okay coin with 200 times leverage? I didn't oh, know geez. they had 200x. Jesus. Oh, God, my God. It was it was awful. And then, like I said, each Bitcoin was only 200 bucks. So you lose <laughs> you lose $1,000. You lost five Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, fuck it. Now, it's just like, oh. Yeah. I, I don't even want to talk about how much Bitcoin I lost in 2014, uh, 2015. That, that's Jesus. been me on BitMEX lately, unfortunately. Just liquidation me after too. liquidation. Just yeah, getting this, destroyed. I, I I will not lie. This last uh, drop we just had right before we shut up uh, to eight thousand. Uh, I mean, I saw the I saw I, I didn't see that extra dip coming. That uh, that dip kicked my ass. Yeah, that was vicious. Like, well, not really the dip itself. It was more the sideways action afterwards. I wasn't expecting to stay sideways for so long, so that kind of kind of yeah. got me. But uh, 
this this big pop, like I said, I, I added to my spot position uh, right before the day before this pop to eight thousand took off. So I, I'm still happy. I mean, mm-hmm. I would have much rather had been sitting in an open leverage position, but I mean, still. Well, it, like that was such a. It, it was kind of a interesting move to watch, kind of you know, in the process of the days leading up to it, because I know, like myself, I didn't feel comfortable being in a position. Um, so I know, you know, talking to a few buddies, they're like, oh yeah, like, what are you doing, man? I got a short, I got a, you know, I got a long, whatever, blah, blah. I'm like, ah, I'm I'm sitting flat because I don't even want to think about what this could do potentially. And then, you know, because it's setting up on the chart, it looks, you know, your classic, you know, your classical TA charting. They're going to be like, oh, it's a bear flag. It's a bear flag. It's all going to break down. And everybody's, you know, we're watching the shorts just pile on even the Phoenix data. The shorts are just loading up. And then we get that pop up and what I think it it jumped like a thousand dollars pretty much in what like 10 minutes yeah yeah it was, yeah. It was ridiculous nor- now what i've learned with bitcoin is, uh bitcoin loves to ask fuck classical chartists it yeah. really really does so whenever you see something that is that obvious and not only that obvious but that um I, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it, that classical, you know, that that yeah. easy of a setup in your that, face you know, every, kind of thing. It's like, yeah, yeah. every TA is is going to see and be like, oh shit, you want to? Uh, what I've learned is you want to go contrarian, yeah, in that yeah. even even if it's only a little bit. So, like I said, what mm-hmm. I started doing was I started scaling up my spot Bitcoin position. Uh, I saw that shit. I was like, you know what? All these short. Yeah, it just it's not sitting right because I've seen this mm. too many times before. And I'm not gonna say I knew for sure it was gonna happen. That's why I chose to go with, you know, hedging into spot BTC instead of leveraged. But mm. uh I I did have a feeling that it was gonna go up more than, you know, go back down. So cause like I said, I've I've seen this time and again. And Bitcoin yeah. really loves to do oh. uh, loves to do the opposite of what everybody expects. Oh, I've yeah. gotten wrecked so many times. Oh yeah, what even <laughs> logic would dictate to be yeah. okay? This is like the only possible outcome, and Bitcoin's going to tell you, "Now nah, go fuck yourself." We're going to do the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah. I was I was looking at one of my old charts that I had, and this was from Bitcoin was around I think like eight hundred, nine hundred dollars, and there was this massive rising wedge, insane bearish divergence. You know, and I, I was looking at this and I'm like, damn, you know, because I remember this time I was short. I was like, you know, this looks like a great short. And Bitcoin doing what Bitcoin likes to do, it it, it broke up, you know, and it keeps running higher. And it's like, you know, you're looking at the chart and you're like, what the hell? Like, you know, I wasn't wrong per se on my analysis, but, you know, Bitcoin doesn't care. It's, you know, it does yeah, what not it at wants all. to do. And, and I, I, we probably should have, preface this at the very beginning of the episode but uh if anybody wants to get into leverage uh trading uh it requires a lot of hands-on time Mm. so this is not going to be like regular trading where you could just buy a bag and sit on it and wait and just check on it you know maybe once or twice a day Mm -hmm. no 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 with leverage trading you want to sit there with it uh well i know that uh, uh well you don't want to sit there with it, watch it, because then you know you'll overthink your shit. But uh, you yeah. want to be able to get on it at a moment's notice. So it's not a great idea if you're at work or at church at a doctor's appointment. Even though you can open up a position because you know everybody's got mobile devices, not the best idea when you're away from home to open up a leverage position. Uh, especially with their system overload too. Now it's like, uh, oh yeah, you you want to set alarms. You want to set yeah. alarms to watch. Um, or, you know, if you're going to be sitting there anyway, you know, I guess you could have it up. But uh, watching it tends to overthinking, which leads to overtraining. Yeah, I, I think like a big thing, even just for myself, is I, I try to make sure if, you know, I know I'm not going to be able to kind of watch it and observe it the way I usually like to. You know, you got to make sure you got stop losses in place because, you know, like at least from my experience, I've gotten, you know, bent over pretty hard on that because, you know, it's like, uh Oh, I wasn't watching it. Uh Oh, I didn't put a stop in, uh, because this is one of the odd moments. I was away from it for a little bit. And then, Oh, to top it off, BitMEX's system is completely overloaded. 
and I'm watching the price go down and I can't even do anything about my position. Right? Yep. You got to have so. those stop losses set. Uh, yeah. Definitely. And yeah, I mean, not being able to watch it, to walk away for a few minutes, that, that has screwed me before. I have, you know, had my, my stop loss hit because it started going down. Whereas if I would have been watching it, I would have moved my stop loss. I'd have been like, nah, we're going to load up more yeah. right here. We're not going to exit. And, but I wasn't paying attention. I was busy doing real life shit and got hosed, you know, had to have, yeah. would have a stop loss hit that would close out my position. And then 10 minutes later, the price would pump up and I would have been up, you know, 500% if yeah. my fucking, st- so stop losses are a curse and a blessing when it comes to Bitcoin. They really are. Because yeah. like I said, since Bitcoin likes to be so contrarian, lots of stop runs. Yeah, yeah, a, a lot of stuff. Right? The the market maker knows that. The MM, yeah. he knows everybody's – there's a lot of classical chartists using stop losses and take mm-hmm. profits. So they're going to do stop runs all the goddamn time. And then especially yeah. since we've been in this brutal-ass consolidation, I've just been watching the, the stops get run on long and shorts for like the past two weeks straight. It's like Jesus Christ. Have you motherfuckers have not learned – to not goddamn <laughs> trade in this range yeah, yet. I know. Just yeah. fucking like, chill. Everyone says don't trade chop, but like inevitably you get bored and you're like, well, I think I have a good feel oh. for what's going to happen and here we go. And then you get like... Chop is like... It's like, fuck. It chop. just lures you in too. Oh. Like it just yeah, you, it just lures you in. You're like, oh, I can trade well, this. And then you know what? next thing you know, you get you, chopped. It sucks is like, <laughs> you could almost see the writing on the wall with this recent run up. Like shorts were at all time highs. You know, it's like, oh, it would yeah. suck to see them all get liquidated. And here we go. You know, we go up a thousand points. Yeah. Get now it, it takes a lot of you know uh, market knowledge and all being plugged in and everything. It, the, the casual observer probably wouldn't be able to discern this, but you know how it was uh, pretty discernible, at least for Bitcoin veterans, that you know this this last uh, jump up w- was pretty you know obvious. So uh, in times like that, when you don't want to trade the chop, like me, like what I did. Because that that chop was that range was just way too fucking vicious, and so I started scaling into spot Bitcoin. There's always an option. Yeah, it's not as profitable as leveraged. However, when you're sitting in a high chop zone like we have been, and you know people just getting liquidated left and right with no really clear direction either way, go ahead, get bored, do, do some trading, but. Stay away from leverage. Just start loading up on spot, on a spot position. Because well, I then, think that, like, that's so important too. Because one of the, I think, the terrible side effects of trading with leverage is everything is just like right now. We're trying to get these big gains potentially right now. But really, when you think about a trading, investing, whatever you want to call it, um, and how you're approaching it, it's it's a long term game, right? It's whoever can keep the gains they've made through time and, you know, keep on adding to them. Exactly. So it's like, like you like, said, you know, just kind of knowing to just chill out. Like, you know, there's going to be more opportunities. Maybe it doesn't happen in the next week. Maybe it doesn't happen in the next two weeks, but it's not an overnight kind of game. That's the toughest part is patience, play- you know? It's like, even yeah. look at the returns of just holding, yeah. you know? Those people go, oh my God, the market's so boring. I'm only making 1% per day. That's enormous. Mm-hmm. That's a gigantic return yeah. Yeah. if you look at over time. You know, 365% oh, yeah. per year? Uh, I mean, it, that's without considering compounding. <laughs> it's like... It's horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. Exactly. Like I said, uh, for overall strategy, just trading in general, how I feel is, uh, you know, a, a very good year for, of returns on the on the traditional stock market, you know, on Wall Street is fifteen to twenty percent. So mm-hmm. at least for me, as long as I do more than twenty percent on a trade, at least as long as percentage wise I'm beating the Wall Street boys, mm-hmm. I'm happy. I don't give a shit. Uh, I, I I really don't care. Uh, I mean, obviously more is better, you know, come on. But as long as I hit 20% or more, you know, I'm happy because I'm beating what most, you know, 99% of the people on Wall Street are are getting, you know, because the average average good return is 15 to 20%. So as long as I do better than that, I'm happy. All right, I'm going to drop some Dale knowledge on on everyone. Here's some Dale Uh knowledge. So listen up. Uh Once you stop trying to get rich quick, you will quickly get rich. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Write that down, folks. Look at that. Um, 
It's very, very so true. So Cal, what do you think, what's your personal opinion on the return of alt season? Do you think it's here? Do you think it's a ways in the future? Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. All right. <laughs> so uh, what we're getting into Cue the drum is, roll, soundboard yeah. guy. <laughs> you are seeing the opening salvos of what is hopefully the 2018 alt season. Um, now, of course, on the flip side, uh, as, as I've discussed before with others, is that uh, you know a lot of people don't realize this, but we haven't had when, – when people say alt season, uh, at least old timers, we're referring to basically – Almost all of 2014, even though Bitcoin was in a decline from its all-time high of $1,300 at that point, uh, you know, all the way down to 200 by the end of 2014, everybody was still making shitloads of money in altcoins because altcoins were continually popping and pumping throughout all of 2014. Like that was the year of altcoins. So when a lot of old timers are saying, you know, oh, you know, it's going to be alt season, they're, they're thinking something like that, you know, where it was a very long, pronounced, stretched out alt season that lasted mm-hmm. months. However, just like fractals work in charting, uh, there's been repeated fractals on our alt season. Sometimes alt season only lasts 48 hours. Sometimes it lasts a week. Uh, the longest, the largest one we've had since 2014 was summer of last year, which was like, you know, June, July, August of all last that year. Wild. That was my first real experience. Yeah. 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 And, and that was only three months long. Think about it stretched out to an entire year. Like Please, sir. 2014 <laughs> was insane. So uh, I, I highly doubt we will ever see something like that again for the simple Ooh. fact that. There's way well. You got to think back then. There was only like a hundred coins and only yeah. a couple a couple million dollars. So if somebody had yeah, you know just just you know five six thousand bucks, they could make yeah. a bunch a couple dozen coins pump for a while yeah. with just a couple thousand dollars because we had so few coins and the mar- the overall liquidity. market cap was so tiny that it. It was easy to to pump coins for uh, for a long period of time. And now we have way more coins, but way more money too. So I wonder how that balance is going to play out. Well, you see, we get a lot more uh, violent pumps, like you know, what was it, Verge or or, or <sighs> Nano or whatever the fuck. Yeah. yeah, like those all went retarded. Just and insane. Yeah. yeah. So we we get larger pumps now for sure since there's more money but as you said since there's more targets to spread it around on uh they're not as sustained since they're there's not as much money backing them they they aren't sustained as long as as they were in 2014 well as much money compared to the market cap that is um one tweet i wanted to touch on really quick If, if you guys know of imperator on twitter very controversial guy um says yeah, uh, says I've, what's I've on his mind in. all the time but um Good dude, though. Shout out. He had he had a tweet. So he tweeted this out when Bitcoin was about 8,200, 8,250 or so, you know, maybe like 24 hours ago. We're recording this on Saturday. Um, he said, my narrative, BTC dumps a few hundred dollars hard in the next hours, consolidates, bears get cocky, shorts pile on again. Stop real quick. The first part absolutely happened, like right after he said it. Um, his <laughs> next, an hour later. Yeah, the next <laughs> step, he says, is violent breakup, altcoins pump as well. Bears liquidated again. Final bull trap up to 12K with alt pumping for a few weeks. And then bear market until BTC 1 to 3,000 USD. I tend to agree with pretty much all of that, except I think the end bear market until BTC 1 to 3 USD. I think um, if it yeah, does go back down, it won't that go that low. low. And well, I think what he's following is, is largely what happened with Bitcoin in 2013, where we had kind of this sucker's rally back up to like 800, 900 or so. I don't know how exactly how, was, how high it was back then, but um, and then it really just, the rug was pulled out from under everybody, and it really was like the soul-crushing drop for like a year after that. Um, I think... Um, yep, I remember all of Yeah, I think we're going to follow that playbook <laughs> largely in, a, in the same way, just because human nature doesn't change that much. But I do think this market is different enough in that there's so much more money involved and so much more money in terms of institutional money waiting on the sidelines to get in 
that I don't know if we'll see that really like destructive rug pull from under us. I mean, I could see us going up to 12K and then just keep climbing higher and maybe challenge all-time highs again. But uh, I don't know what you guys are thinking. Well, I would say that there's always going to be a uh, uh, consolidation, obviously. Uh, also, what you guys, uh, uh, well, I'm not going to say you guys specifically, but uh, what a lot of new traders that are, are just entering the scene are, are failing to take into account is that they're forgetting motherfuckers like me have been buying Bitcoin way under a thousand dollars for a very long time. Yeah. So even if Bitcoin crashes to a thousand, yes, it would suck. I would not be happy at all. However, on, you know, who, who the hell would like to, you know, all of a sudden take an eighth of, of their net, <laughs> net worth, you know, That's just fun. be like, Oh yeah, here's yeah. an eighth of what you're currently worth. There you go. You know, yeah. that would suck. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I would not be happy with Bitcoin under a thousand. Uh, however, um, I wouldn't discount, I'm not saying it's probable, uh, but I'm saying that it's definitely possible because there's a lot of big money. I mean, look, Tim Draper, uh, you know, fucking, you know, motherfuckers like that. There's been a lot of wall street, big money motherfuckers in Bitcoin for years gathering at under a thousand dollars. So yeah. I would not automatically discount a return to one to 2000. Right off the top of my head, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't disregard it. Uh, I wouldn't bank on it either. But uh, I am saying, you know, I know. I know this is a lot of the 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 trader double speak. You know, <laughs> this yeah. could happen, but this could happen too. <laughs> no, yeah. I I I feel that Bitcoin will not return to to one to three thousand either. I do not believe that either. However, I have taken steps to hedge against that. Just in mm -hmm. case. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that that's having stuff. Another thing we got to watch is like uh, even profitability for the miners. Oh, now, see, now now you're getting into more of my territory because like I said, yeah. I, I'm real big on mining <laughs> and yeah. I am waiting. I, I'm actually, to tell you the truth, if I'm being 100% honest, I am praying for Bitcoin to break down further to wash out a lot of these newbie miners that don't know what the fuck they're doing, that overpaid for GPUs and equipment, and they're just trying to, like you guys said earlier, you know, get rich quick. And no, I want to wash those assholes out because A, uh, less network difficulty, less net hash for me to contend with, and B, uh, you know, cheaper GPU prices for me so I can scale up, you know, yeah. larger for less money. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think we've kind of, we were we were brushing that level in the in the low six thousands because uh, yeah. I, I watched you know nice hash rentals and, and net hash across the board uh, for altcoins generally altcoins generally not Bitcoin itself but uh, you know mm -hmm. net hash and, and nice hash rentals and net hash across the board kind of start to to decline a little bit so uh, mm -hmm. and I know that uh, you know people have, have there's been some stories of like uh, one of my friends got a really good deal on a shitload of 1070 Ti rigs because the dude's wife was fucking furious at him because he bought all that shit when Bitcoin was 20 grand and now it's Ooh. 8 grand and his wife is forcing that dude to sell those rigs. Oh. So my buddy just picked up like five, six each. Each rig is like five or six cards and he only paid like two grand for the uh, for each Jeez. rig. <laughs> And these are 1070s. Yeah, these are GTX. So I need to find so, some I mean, guy whose wife is really pissed at him so I can break into mining on the cheap, basically. Well, you see, now I'm thinking about getting back into mining. Well, no, 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 not yet. Because like I said, we're going to see the small hobby miners getting squeezed yeah. right now. But what I want to get, I want the big warehouse motherfuckers to start getting washed out because not mm. only will net ha NetHash drop, like a rock, but then you're going to have hundreds, if not thousands of GPUs flooding the market to resell and that they're going to be cutting prices on. So all of a sudden I get to be one of those warehouse sized motherfuckers for a fraction <laughs> of the cost. So uh, you, you know, see, this is the side of it that people don't often really think about with no. Bitcoin. 
Oh yeah. See, and and to be a miner that survived the 2014-15 crash in bear market, you know, uh, most of the time we did mine at a loss. Like there was so many GPUs flooding the market and so many rigs and so many people just getting out of mining. Like you could pick up a GPU rig in 2014 for fucking cheap, mm-hmm. fucking cheap. Well, like 2015 really. But uh, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm waiting on is another minor capitulation. I have not yeah. seen that yet. I've seen a, a more or less, you know, the newbie trader capitulation. Capitulation when when we hit uh, six thousand back in February, you know, because uh, mm-hmm. there was a whole lot of doom and gloom then, and I was just loading up like a motherfucker. I was like, "Yep, just gonna keep stacking into my lungs." <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. So, Cal, this is something I often wonder about, and I ask like these OGs who've been in the game for a while. When the market was really crashing in two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen, or when Bitcoin was really crashing back then. Was there any fear that this stuff would just like cease to exist? It would just go to zero and just be like a thing oh, of the shit, past? Yeah. 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 Oh shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that shit all the time. We were like, well, guys, you know, it's been fun. <laughs> you know, time to go back to go back to Walmart or whatever. I mean, I know we made those <laughs> jokes this year and everything. You know, we've continued to make those jokes, but there was a, an actual smack of uh sincerity back in 2014. And I, I think that's largely not the case anymore. I think people who have been no. in it this long are like, okay, this stuff's here to stay. It's going to be really volatile up and down just like any new asset class is, but it's not going away. It, there's too much big money in it. There's too many people who are smart working mm-hmm. on it, too many good developers in it, um, too many venture capital firms that are backing, backing many blockchain projects. Um, so I think that's going to play a factor in the market as well because that affects sentiment, you know, because the fear of something going to absolute zero is really real. I mean, that's like something that could scare the shit out of anybody and make them capitulate and sell and, you know, what have you. At this point, that's, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, what we've been seeing is a uh, uh, one of the factors of, of what we've been seeing with Bitcoin price recently is all those new traders you know, giving into that fear and capitulating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas the older traders, you know, uh, we've already been through that. So we're done with that. You know, we're, we're ride or die. You know, we're in this. Like yeah. uh, when I first started, the only person that I knew that was full-time crypto that actually made their, you know, they didn't have a day job and they just did crypto all day was Crypto Cobain. That was the only motherfucker I knew that was full-time. Mm-hmm. Uh and then slowly afterwards, you know, uh, some of the other guys started going full time. Uh, I I honestly can't remember if Angelo was full time or not at that point. I do not believe so, but I think he did very shortly after. Uh, you know, Emerald BTC, Gambler, Sicarius, all those guys. None of those guys were full time when I first got in. And so, you know, it was all of us making jokes. Well, you know. Back to McDonald's, and we're fucked now. You know, Bitcoin's just going to keep trending down from 200 down to a dollar. And, you know, like, I mean, we, we would say that shit and everything. And there was some fear, but, you know, there was a lot of us were like, you know what? Fuck it. If it does go to a dollar, we're going to buy the shit out of it. Just, just hang on. Just cause. Yeah. 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 Just, just hang on. We're going to buy the shit out of it. And fuck it, ride or die, all the way to the yeah. end. And, Death or glory. Yep. Here we go. And, and so far, it looks like it, the, the answer's been glory. <laughs> yeah, I read something. There's a piece by uh, Morgan Housel is his name. He's like an investment um, advisor, manager, something or other in traditional equities. But it's basically about bubbles and how he basically distills them down to bubbles being a manifestation of everybody involved and all of their various time horizons. And I thought it was a really cool, interesting way of looking at it. You can probably look this piece up online. I'll probably tweet about it as well. Um, But I think it's especially true because like you were talking about, you know, you've been in this game for a while. So you've seen these swings, these wild swings where we're going down 70, 80 percent, and then we rebound 20 percent. And and um, and you're probably, you know, among a group of people who are comfortable enough at this point where it's not going to be the end of the world, even if we do stay down here for a little bit. But there are a lot of people where it is the end of the world, you know, all the people who got in at 20K. So the way they're viewing this market is way different than the way a lot of us are. Um, and that's something exactly. that we need to consider when we look at this big, you know, organism that is the market. Exactly. You are correct. When I talk about market perspective, this is what I'm talking about, how I have the market perspective that somebody who got in in December, January does not. 
because all they all they've seen of the market is everybody talk, was talking about it. It was the hot popular thing, and it was worth twenty thousand where they bought it, and now it's worth eight thousand. And nobody's t- relatively, you know, as compared to December January, nobody's talking about it. Blah blah blah. So, whereas for me, I bought it at two hundred dollars. So being at eight thousand is still fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm st- yeah. I'm I'm still like. You know, everybody's all gravy, oh, bear- baby. <laughs> oh, it's a bear market, bear market, bear market. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you assholes are talking about, but I'm still up a couple thousand percent. So, uh, bull market- <laughs> it's kind of weird to think about that too, right? Like, because I know myself, I found my like realizing that it's like, wow, I've lost a lot of my portfolio value here. But then I was like, huh, but if I look back at to when I actually got in here, most people would call me an idiot for being yeah, pissed off. Totally. Yeah, you know, it's like. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Look at the stock market. The stock market's been roaring most of the past like five, six, seven years. And your returns, if you invested in crypto, have been a lot more of a roller coaster, but you still ended up with a hell of a lot more money than if you were investing in stocks. And stocks are considered a quote unquote aggressive investment, you know? So. Oh, yeah. And, and it, it's funny how uh, your perspective in such changes as the more time goes by and you spend in, in crypto. Because, you know, back in 2014, Losing a thousand dollars would have been fucking devastating for me, mm-hmm. you know. If I lost five Bitcoin on a trade, holy mm-hmm. fucking shit! Oh my god, I would be like curled into a ball, like puking. Like I was yeah. poor as shit. I, I was in the army, had just gotten divorced. I was poor, <laughs> but uh, now you know there was a trade. Yeah. In, in fact, speaking of leverage trade, this is why I chilled out on leverage trading. Is you know I just lost three quarters of a bitcoin on a, on a leverage trade like a week ago, and I was like, oh man, that sucks. But, yeah. yeah. Oh well, and you know dollar. Yes, bitcoin wise, that's less than a fifth of what I would have lost in 2014. You know, uh, where it would have been you know four you know four or five bitcoin. However, yeah. that was like six thousand dollars I just lost versus yeah. one thousand. So it's really weird, kind of like holy shit. This is something that would have been, you know, not still not a whole lot of money back then, but a, a very life changing amount yeah. is now fucking yeah. nothing. It's awesome, yeah. and it's crazy how quickly yeah. you get used to having a certain amount of money too. You know, where it's like right. it, it, you get the, under that certain level, you're like, oh shit, I'm good, I'm going broke. I need to, I need to hustle. <laughs> yeah, like at first it's it's like remarkable. I've, you're like, oh my god, yeah. I can't believe I have this much money. But then eventually it's just like, yeah, that's what it is. You know, but <laughs> it's, like, really it's an, you like you expect it now. It's like you don't want to see it go lower, right? It's like no, no, I am sort of comfortable with this. But I'm still yeah. not. It's like I don't have relative. it, even though it's yeah, there. It's totally. like, like yeah. I mean, I was like living like paycheck to paycheck, you know, not that long ago. Oh I yeah, mean, and like I mean, when I say not that long ago, like a little bit of time, but like really not that long ago, you know. But to even, but it's still like even with now, even though I'm way more comfortable, I still get like a little bit concerned about the market because just I don't want to have less than I have now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. And and then you know you compound that with poor bastards like me who have kids and shit. Who like that. like I had to sell some sixty eight hundred dollar Bitcoin last week and I was very unhappy about it. But you know what? Kids got to eat, got to pay bills, yep. yeah. so I had to do it. I was very unhappy. I was like, "God damn, sixty eight hundred dollar <laughs> Bitcoin, sons of bitches! This shit's gonna pop yeah. up, motherfucker!" Yeah. You're, you're cussing the whole time you sell yeah, exactly. it. Oh yeah, yeah. oh I am, I am. You better believe it. You just like close your eyes and reluctantly hit the sell button, just like Ugh, like while making painful yep. noises. <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely well you guys got any uh parting words so cal do you or you guys have any other quest further questions before we have some exciting news to release i just want to say i love Ooh. having the perspective it's awesome having you on man yeah thank you so cal like it was awesome and i i really hope the listeners enjoy this as much as i have just to, yeah, you know great. chatting with yeah. you so yeah no problem i think it, it gives people a perspective on something you know we've kind of touched scratched the surface on on margin leverage trading but uh to dive really deep into it like you did so cal i think this will be yeah. really great for the listeners yeah. and i applaud you for opening up about it a little bit more than most people probably would so thank you again yeah yeah no problem you know i get these kinds of questions all the time on twitter and that's all well and good but considering the time it would take to type out a response and also <laughs> the amount of uh tweets it would take 
I don't really like to answer people on Twitter in, in as much detail for the simple fact that it's so inefficient. Uh, so obviously being on this uh, podcast is a much better platform to kind of break down uh, leverage trading a little bit. Uh, I would also suggest everybody check out www.babypips.com. It's uh, tra- yeah. It will teach you all the basics of trading, all the basics of uh, technical analysis of TA, uh, and it's perfect for the beginners, and it's all free. That's the best part. All the courses are free. Yeah, I've seen you tweet that out before, and I, I strongly encourage the listeners Use to go it check a few it out. Times myself. Yeah, and um, now so Cal, when people message you and ask you about it, you can just link them to yes. uh, the podcast. Spam it everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so Killer, you got something you want to announce? To yeah, uh, we touched on this on a podcast last week, I think, but we're going to be opening up our Crypto Street store very shortly. I believe the date we're aiming for is this upcoming Tuesday. So. Um, you'll probably or you'll probably be hearing this episode on Monday or Tuesday. So we'll be releasing the store either the next day or the day this episode airs. Um, we're really excited about it. We're working with some really talented artists and some really talented other people. Um, shout out, listen, um, but um, so listen, Destro. Yeah, so yeah, um, super stoked about that in terms of getting that off the ground. Just been uh, you know a lot of good people involved in it. We're the first thing we're going to be releasing is a T-shirt. Um, just going to be one item, limited edition. Um, I think you guys are really going to like it. It's a really cool looking t-shirt. It's something that I would like to wear even if I didn't know anything about the podcast. And that's one thing we really aimed for. We were, you know, we didn't want to have something that people were just going to wear because it's the podcast. Um, we wanted to have something that people would be proud to wear and that it's a cool item. So um, keep an eye out for that. We'll probably be tweeting up a storm about it, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, we'll be opening the store on Tuesday. So, so get your limited edition SoCal Crypto T-shirt from these guys. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, you can arrange that. I'm over here frantically designing one so we can we can meet the listeners' demands. Yeah. yeah. I, I doubt anybody would want a T-shirt with me. <laughs> I think you'd be surprised. Hey, you'd be. You surprised. never know. Yeah. You never know. All right, cool. That uh, wraps up another great episode. Hopefully, everyone listening really enjoyed SoCal's insight on on the leverage trading. Um, take care. Hopefully, if if you're in the Midwest, I know you're getting slammed by a blizzard right now. So just wait it out because you know on Monday it's going to be back in the 60s. So rock and roll. Take care, everyone. Peace out. Tip your waitress, and let's go alt season.